Welcome to episode 170 of Manage the Wild. I'm Nick Madsen. The other day while I was on the tractor, I was thinking about all the different ways that the animals are being managed in the area that I live. And there's so many different factors going on. Biologists are running around and they're trying to get the most accurate counts possible. You've got researchers that are constantly doing research, trying to understand you know, different types of species, how they're affected and all these changes. And then you have the weather that's constantly, constantly making and creating problems, whether we have too, too much of a good thing, we have too much snow in the wintertime that kills off the deer, or we have drought for multiple years that uh, causes a lot of issues that way. And so they're constantly fighting and battling the elements. And I was thinking about one uh, the ways that managers, wildlife managers, go about managing animals. And it's kind of like in certain scenarios, they're just putting or applying Band-Aids to certain situations. Like one of the, the things that I disagree with most are bounty systems for coyotes. Because I don't think they're really doing very much good. A study came out not too long ago. Uh, actually, it just came out this year. But it was talking about um, how predator management would influence the survival of mule deer fawns. It was put out by Brock McMillan, and he did a really good job. And the study is very interesting. But their whole goal was to understand our coyote bounties, coyote removals, coyote, those type of things, are they helpful? And they came across, uh, they, what they found out is, is there's multiple things that need to be done for these to be successful. One, you have to do the removals for multiple years in a row. And it has to be a targeted approach. You can't be just a statewide. So you've got to identify your area. And it has to be what they call generational removals. You have to have multiple generations removed. You can't just have wildlife services or professional trappers come in for just a short period of time, do the removal, and then leave. It's got to be multiple generations of time, so multiple seasons. Two, for it to be effective for mule deer, you have to do these removals in an area where they are having fawns, fawning habitat. You can't just go and do uh, removals anywhere you want. Oh, this looks like a good area. We're going to go here. So you have to do a bunch of research and find out where predominantly what would be considered good fawning habitat. And that's a challenge when you got deer all over because you want to be most effective. So you got to look at those units that are really struggling and then go in and identify those habitats for fawning. One of the best ways to do this is by using collars. The state of Utah and a lot of other states, uh, with the help of the Migration Initiative, all that funding, they're putting out a lot of collars to understand movement ecology and how they are migrating from season to season. And so it pretty good indicator you can go and look at the collars look at the type of habitat look at the type of terrain and all those things and get a pretty good understanding of those areas that you have concerns and then the last thing they talk about is it needs to be in conjunction when it's high additive mortality and what that means is Additive mortality refers to the effects of multiple things on mortality. So predation is one of them. Let's say you've got a bunch of habitat loss going on, disease, hunting, all those things combined. And predation has to be pretty high up on that additive list, that additive mortality list. If it's pretty low, and it's not necessarily a factor. Let's say you have a lot more habitat loss going on and more disease that's spreading, then you're not going to have as much. And so the, here's what I see is it's one of the low hanging fruit. 
and wildlife managers as well as uh, state legislatures, uh, state, state legislators, they come in and they're like, hey, we need to do something really quick. Sportsmen are upset and this is one of the ways that we can do it and we're going to go in and institute a coyote bounty or a bounty on cougars or we're just going to go in and do predator removal uh, targeting all cougars and all coyotes. And a lot of the times, the additive mortality, they're pretty low on that list where it could be habitat loss is one. You could have uh, a bunch of fences, a bunch of roads. You're blocking off migration. You've got a lot of fences that they're getting trapped in or roads and they're getting hit by cars or just a whole lot of other things. And mortality is not necessarily as high. It reminded me of a study that was going on where everybody was positive that it was coyotes that were killing all the fawns. And then they found out a bunch of the fawns were falling in holes of badgers or they were getting trapped in fences, or they were just randomly dying for no apparent reason. Not all of it was from predation from coyotes. So, instead of applying band-aids, it's nice when research gets done and you can start making the correct decisions, not just appeasing people just to hurry and look like you're doing something or staying busy. All right, you guys, have a great day. Stay wild.